Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Carex to another episode in this beginner's guide to Europa Universalis 4. We're playing as Portugal, and for the most part, we're just letting it run. Things are moving and grooving right now. Looks like we can afford a technology. That's a military tech. Again, I'm going to squeeze that in before this institution cost gets too high. We do not want to fall behind on military, no matter what. Um, we have two admirals right now. We have, okay, so actually, I don't know if we've seen this before, actually, or if we did, I might have accidentally took it for granted. Uh, we just got a new banner saying there's a new superior unit type. So sometimes when you get new technologies, um, you get new unit types. Actually, no, this has not happened yet. The first time you get a new unit type is military tech five. So we have a new infantry unit type. This banner just reminds us. We can click on the banner and that'll take us to the military tab. Then we just have to click on the, the infantry unit because it says we got a new infantry and we can just click any of these. I'm not even going to bother talking about uh, the pips and, and which pips you want to get. These are all relatively equivalent. I usually just click the man at arms. That's that's what I do. I, I don't even think about it. I don't even consider it. It's just the pips are allocated slightly differently. I really, really do not know. It's it's not even that they're in different phases, but like there's just even the this, this subtlest of, of tweaks in terms of whether or not they're like in the defensive thing or the offensive. I, I don't know how this works. I mean, every single battle that you do has sort of like shock phases and fire phases and defensive and non-defensive phases so it, it all balances out it all balances out i'm just going to select the man at arms you can pick whatever you like it's all going to be the same it also is saying that we can now have invest in a new idea group so we can get this quest for the new world there we go we can get quest for the new world what that means is we can now actually recruit explorers Okay, we started the game with an explorer, but unfortunately they have died, right? They passed away. Um, they were, that did allow us to get down here though, which is kind of cool. So we are actually going to be able to explore. And in order to explore, we might actually, unfortunately, we have to pay, I think we have to pay the Navy. I think we have to pay the Navy. Let's get our best Admiral in charge. Have this guy protecting trade. Um... And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to take these heavy ships. And we're going to form a, an exploratory. Um, we're going to we're going to go exploring with these heavy ships. I think you need three ships. You can do heavies or lights. I'm going to just do these heavies because, well, they're available and our lights are protecting trade. These guys are pretty expensive. Usually you just do three light ships, um, and we're going to have to build up a little bit of diplomatic power in order to do that. We're just letting the game run, by the way, guys. Game is running. Ottomans are at war. It looks like they're getting beat up a little bit, to be honest. Which is kind of interesting, but I think the Ottomans will probably rally and win that war unless they're really weak, unless I'm missing something there. We have a little bit of extra spy network with Tunis. Um, not Tunis, I apologize. This is Tlemcen. So we've gotten claims on these two provinces, which we want. And let's get a claim on this one. I'm kind of strategically avoiding the Moroccan provinces because maybe we could actually sort of retake those in like a reconquest war or something. That'd be kind of interesting to vassalize Morocco. Kind of go do that here. I'm going to go take a little peek at something that we haven't looked at before. I'm going to hover my mouse over this 10% down here. This is talking about how much war score it would take to take this province in war. That's not particularly interesting. But if I hover over this, it'll tell me how much it'll cost to take all of Morocco in war. 64% war score. What that means is, what that's telling me is that Morocco is so small, we could gobble them up in a single war. That means that we could choose to vassalize them or annex them in a single war. So next time we go to war with Morocco, we could just vassalize them. And we could use them as an excuse to go conquer all this land down here. Because that will be, um, this is their land, right? So we could be giving it back to them. Uh, even though they, they are controlled by us. So <laughs> we'll just have to, uh, we'll have to, we could, do a, we could do some sneaky diplomacy stuff in that sense. We still have an advisor. We're not paying for an administrative advisor for the same logic. We might want to do that. We're making some decent money. There might be an administrative advisor that can help pay for, for their own salary, like the production efficiency guy. If we check here, we are making a little bit of money from production, but it's definitely not our main source of revenue. Definitely not our main source of revenue. Let's just get him. Let's get him. You know, money is meant to be spent. We're actually still earning a bunch of ducats. We're earning a bunch of ducats. We have a little bit of excess. I'm going to actually sort of invest that into building another another uh, church right just going to buildings clicking on the building i want to build a church 
because it's really the only thing we can build right now, right? Until we get more technology, right? What is it? Uh, next admin technology, we're going to get workshops. Workshops will probably be a lot of good places that we can build good workshops um, once that uh, once that comes into play. Military power oh, and get a little bit buttered up with Castile. Castile already loves us. Or the mercantilism. I think we justified getting the mercantilism last time. The military power might be more useful to us now just because we're realizing that we're getting this penalty with the Renaissance not being embraced. We might have to do some developing in our capital. I'm going to take the military power this time. Making Castile a little extra happy isn't necessarily a bad thing, though. Let's butter up Brittany um, since Brittany is uh, our new ally. So let's make him happy. Looks like England has now the controller of the Curia, which is kind of cool. So England is a friend of ours. Um, because we are also allied with the Pope, we could be buttering up the Pope, making them extra happy. We haven't done that for a while. But because we're buttered up with the Pope, right, we're getting more papal influence just per year, per month, or, or whatever, right? Per year. 72% bonus because of their opinion of us. I'm assuming if we get them all the way up to 200 opinion here, which is possible really only if you have an alliance with them basically which we do which we do um then we'll probably end up getting a hundred percent bonus i think that's the maximum you can get there smugglers running rampant we can lose some trade efficiency or we could just lose some ducats i'm just going to lose some ducats because i think uh paying the cash up front ends up saving you money in the long term because i think it's like 10 years of like trade efficiency reduction or something like that i think that's how the math works out some nations down here in Africa that we're discovering. We do have the dipl diplomatic power to make an explorer. And you know what? I think to some degree, what the heck? Let's do that. Let's get an explorer. Let's start exploring. We're at peace right now, so why not? Let's attach the explorer. It says the explorer is ready to go. It's just giving a heads up that they are, the explorer is ready to go. And we can now go off into. The unknown, which is kind of exciting. So let's go looking for, uh, <laughs> let's go, uh, let's just basically, I'm using shift click to kind of do this, but let's see how much attrition damage we take doing this. And then I'm going to have them land in the Azores as, and when they're done, but hopefully they'll go and explore all this and we'll try to find the Caribbean. We'll try to find the, uh, the new world, right? That's essentially what we're trying to do. We're still building up with Tlemcen, just getting more and more claims on them so that when we go to war, we can get more land cheaply, which is nice. Um, we could build some more claims on Morocco, but for the most part, I think we've decided that we might actually just be vassalizing Morocco and then, and then sort of just leaping into a big war against Marrakesh. Doesn't look like Morocco... Actually, Morocco is actually allied with Tunis. Now, I don't think Tunis by themselves is going to be able to defend um, Morocco against us, right? I think we will be able to actually sort of sweep through Morocco. The interesting to check, actually, if we really want to be proactive here, is does Morocco have a fort? Well, they have a capital fort, right? Your capital is always a small garrison of 1,000 people, but they do not have a castle. There is no castle built on this. That's why it's saying it has capital fort. That's not the same as Fez. Fez is a mountain like castle, basically. Much more powerful, much more defensible. The capital fort is just basically something so that you don't completely... Um, looks like we are taking damage, right? 9% attrition over here. We'll have to see how they do. I, 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 you know, ideally, we got to keep an eye on that, that explorer there. Um, you know what? Here, how about you guys just come straight up to here and then go into here? Because I do not want you guys to die. But they're starting to take 11% there. So they'll just have to heal, right? It's just a little game of of having to kind of micromanage that, which is kind of unfortunate. I, I think there probably would have potentially been a better system for that. But let's get another claim. First one was uh, was 20. The next one is 25. The next one is 30. This one's going to be 35 spy network to get the fourth claim on Tlemcen. And to be honest, that's pretty good, right? Those three prov those four provinces right there are pretty good. Um, I don't know if there's going to be too much more that we're going to need. But we could get a claim on this one too. Explorer is ready, but I think they're still damaged, so we'll let them heal. We'll let those guys heal up. I really kind of wish that if the fleet was healing, that it wouldn't actually show that banner to say they're ready to go, because they're not really ready to go, are they? Not really. Basically, we're just we're just kind of cruising here, guys. We have um, truces right till 14 
71, we're making money. That feels good. We're exploring. We're pushing our way towards the new world. If we check on Castile, we could actually sort of take a little sneak peek here, go to their diplomacy screen. I'm going to check their ideas. They don't have any ideas. They still have administrative tech uh, four. So they haven't picked their first idea group. I don't know if they're going to try to go explore exploration as well to compete with us or not. We're at 100% here. Let's... Uh, Looks like we have maxed our relations. What that was saying is that we've maxed our relations with the Pope. Okay. So there we go. It looks like also Austria has regained the Holy Roman Empire, but there's a lot of people voting for a lot of different nations right now for whatever reason. Um, so Austria might be in trouble the next time, but right now it seems like Austria has retaken the Holy Roman Empire. Ottomans are actually losing the war. That is so interesting to me, which also means that if we attack Granada, which luckily Granada did not lose anything, they're still allied with the Ottomans. They lost their alliance with Tunis, though. Oh, that is juicy. Or whoever they were allied to. Who were they allied to? I don't know. We have a truce with these guys, but Ottomans, heck no Ottomans wouldn't join because they're getting sieged right now. They're getting completely sieged. So it's just good to kind of take a look at that, right? Now, the game is running really fast, but that's because we're really not really actively working on anything, right? We just kind of need pr progress. We're going to lose some more money there and take some more corruption. We have lost some power projection. Okay, so this is telling us right now that we have too many military leaders. Well, a second ago, we didn't have too many. Well, that's because of power projection. That's telling me my power projection must have gone down. So we no longer have the ability to have three leaders at a time. Now, we have an easy fix for this, right? We have an easy fix for this. We can just boot this dude out of here. Jose can just get 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 bopped, right? Kick him out, fire him. That's fine. We don't need two admirals. So we can kick this guy out, and that'll take care of that because that was actually costing us one military power per month as a penalty. We don't want. We don't need that, right? We don't need three, essentially with the Explorer, right? Three admirals, completely unnecessary because the Explorer works as an admiral too, just a slightly weaker one. Um, but it does raise an interesting question of how do we maintain this and how do we keep it high? Because, heck, even if we look here, we haven't talked about this, but this is good stuff, right? Trade power, morale of armies, um, prestige, fort defense. This is all stuff that, like, sounds good. It's some of the things we've talked about, some of the things we haven't. Morale of armies is particularly good, right? So how do we how do we keep this up? Well, having long-term rivals is a good thing. We have right So we've maintained... We have three rivals, Aragon, Tlemcen, T Tunis, and so on and so forth, right? So that's giving us 15, but we kind of need to... Be able to get more than that. We've got a little bit because we've we've eclipsed Granada and Morocco, but those are decaying. One thing we can do is instead of protecting trade, we can actually Sorry guys, I'm catching myself here. One thing we can do is we can actually issue an embargo to on arrival specifically. Now, I don't know the exact nitty-gritty of this. I just know this is one of those things that you kind of do with your rivals. If you have a rival, you're totally safe issuing the embargo of them. If you embargo someone that is not your rival, then you get you basically take a hit. And it warns you. It warns you. It'll say you have costly embargoes. But if we rival our embargoes, you or, or sorry, if we if we embargo our rivals, which makes sense, right? These guys are rivals. Why would we want to do trade with them? And we want to stifle trade with them. We want to create policies that will prevent them from we know that global trade incur like helps everybody, right? But we don't want to help everybody. We want to help everybody except our rivals. So we're going to embargo our rivals, tell everybody they're no good. That's going to give us a little bit more. Now we're actually at 26. We actually have enough for now. It's going down, right? Because the eclipsed modifiers are going away slowly. But we actually have enough that we're almost kind of hanging out at about 18, right? We're hanging out at about 18. That's not too bad. It's not too bad. These guys are ready. Can we make it to there, or, we, or is this going to be bad news bears? That's the thing. We have to just kind of see what is... Um... Oh, you know what I just realized, guys? I think this is why you want to do it with lights. Because lights are faster. Lights are faster. So it kind of makes inherent sense to think that a light ship fleet can explore a little bit more efficiently than a heavy. Let's let here. Let's let's get rid of some of these guys. You guys protect trade. However, these dudes over here, just get back home. Just get back home, and we will actually move the explorer over to this position. 
once they get back. And we will actually be exploring with this guy. And I think this is going to be a lot more efficient. A lot more efficient. This is the Caribbean down here. Caribbean Sea. So that's kind of exciting. And then swing back and base in the Azures. And we'll kind of just keep doing that. Manpower is going up quite fast. We're making money. We're still about six years away. We're on speed four right now, guys. I mean, the game is moving. And it's kind of scary. But nothing's really happening. I'm just noticing there are Telemsen. Spy network has gotten pretty high. So I'm just kind of you know, getting that going again so that we can get, or just spending it so that we don't waste it, right? Because the longer we sort of work on that, the more likely we're going to get caught. We can get caught. They can do counter espionage and other things, and they can catch us. There's always a chance that they'll find uh, us doing uh, what we're doing there. This is interesting. We barely took any damage. We barely took any damage. That's because these lights are so fast. So I think we might actually be able to do a little bit more of an aggressive sweep. And we'll see if these ships uh, die or not, I guess. Kind of bleak, but there you go. We will see. Letting the game roll. We're kind of just trying to get to 17, or sorry, 40, <laughs> 1471, because that's what all of our truces are ending, right? Although we could look to see what happens if we declare on, ooh, lots of bad stuff. Castile still actually kind of likes Tlemcen. I don't know why they're holding on to that alliance. You would think that there would be a lot of this... Uh, you would think that Castile wouldn't be sympathetic to these guys, but they are for whatever reason. Um, we're still going to be able to attack into these guys here, right? To get into that war in a roundabout way. And this is going to be a perfectly valid war. The thing is, we just have a truce with those guys. Wow. Yeah, these, these boats are fast. These boats are really fast. And they're not taking that much damage at all. It's kind of nice. There, I, I will say, guys, there is a uh, one of the DLC features, just because it's kind of like it's standing out to me right now. But one of the DLC features is is automating these missions. And guys, that is a joy. That is a dream. You don't have to manually do this. It, it just kind of automatically does that. I don't know why that's a like. Why would that be a DLC feature? I have no clue. But but there you go. So we can make the nobility happy at the cost of a little bit of prestige. I don't think we really need a happy nobility for any reason, do we? We're not asking for military support or anything. Although if we actually do make them happy, we could pull some land back from them, which could be good. Otherwise, we have to lose administrative power. I don't think we want to do that. Prestige is nice. I don't think we need it, though. It's already going down to zero, right? It's already sort of going downwards. Actually, it's slightly going up because it's trending towards about 10 because we're getting some some positive modifiers like the last jousting tournament is kind of raising that up a little bit. So it's actually trending up to about 10. But I think for the most part, I'm, uh, I'm going to just lose it and then it'll keep going. It'll climb back up slowly and we'll make the nobility happy. And maybe we'll actually try to try to de-escalate their power in this region. If there's any really like sort of good, strong provinces that can benefit from being a little bit more independent. Um, and I think actually... These provinces here have a high base tax and a high production, but they have a low uh, military power. So why would we want the nobility to be in charge of these ones that have a high base tax, but a low military? That's opposite, right? So let's pull these guys off of here. They're going to be very upset, but it is what it is. Just deal with it, guys. Just deal with it. That means that we're going to be making a lot more money from this province. In fact, I bet you if we go here and we check on temples now, I bet you if we build a temple here, it's going to be a good one. Yep, 0.12 little bit higher that's because this place no longer is getting a penalty for having the nobility in charge but this autonomy is going to have to go away over time right the autonomy is going to have to go away over time looks like we've actually finished a mission what mission did we finish oh build up your force oh, we still haven't hit that button are you kidding me we still haven't hit this button well we've only gone to one war that makes sense right so we're gonna wait till the second war the second war that we fight we will hit that button we need to remember to do that though our subjects we're going to try to acquire morocco but i don't know if we're going to acquire two subjects two might be a little bit more than what we're going to do have a high income we're not quite there yet right we haven't been playing the game long enough to get like a high income plumpson spotted us that's totally fine we can butter up france just because well france is france we can uh, butter up austria because they're kind of an important figure in the in the game just kind of make these people happier rather than rather than not happy but i think our allies like us yeah, England loves us, Castile loves us, Brittany loves us, the Pope loves us, everybody loves us. 
if we think we're going to be going to war with Morocco soon, what we could do is we could build a spy network against them, but it's still going to be a few years away, right? I'm just letting things run. We're just kind of like watching. We're seeing if any wars break out. We're not going to be in any wars, right? We have truces with all these people. We have truces with all these people. <gasps> there you go, guys. We can get our first colonist. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So let's do that. Let's hit this button. Pay some. I know we're getting a little behind on Diplotech, right? But we already have a penalty that we're trying to avoid. And the way we avoid that is with time, right? With time. So we're going to actually be investing in idea groups, which suffer no penalty. We don't pay any penalty for taking these idea groups. We're paying full cost. In fact, these idea groups actually make it cheaper to get the Diplo tech. Every idea you have of a certain type actually gives you a discount on your diplomatic technology, which is kind of cool. So by getting um, diplomatic idea groups, we're spending a lot of points here, but that will actually give us a Diplo savings over here that will actually pay for itself in the long term, which is really neat. We have a colonist, guys. We have a colonist. So we have a few different options here. We have a few different options here. Our explorer is, is over here. So we can send this colonist anywhere that we have range, right? Anywhere that we have range. Our colonial range is 160. 160. I think there's a colonial range map mode too. Okay, so if we click on this, we can see if we have any range to any of these areas. Oh, really? We don't have range to there? That's got to be close. Is it because it's Terra Incognita? Hmm. We actually cannot reach the New World yet. That's okay. We'll get there soon. We'll get there soon. We can use um, Arguin here off of Africa as a bouncing off point to come down into Africa and also to get these islands, uh, Cape Verde there. And then jump over to um, to the actual Brazil and, and Colombia and the Caribbean and stuff. So we can use these as a bouncing off point. Or alternatively, we can actually sort of colonize this province that's next to the Canaries. That's actually really not much more progress because we already have Madeira. Hmm. I'm kind of wondering why can't we colonize this province? Well, it's Terra Incognita right now. Let's take this ship and let's go sit them right here. And I want to see if that'll let us explore this or not. Led by an explorer or conquistador, or the land is owned by someone you are at war with, it will be impossible to move your units there. Hmm. So we might need a conquistador. I don't remember having to do that, really. Because um, we didn't obviously land a conquistador over here, right? So what's the deal here? Is it just a, like a percentage chance or something? I don't know. We might need a conquistador there. Let's keep sailing up this coast. And into the Caribbean. Um, there's also sort of Bermuda that we could try to sort of snag um, a siding on Bermuda. I don't think we'd be able to reach it though. We don't have the colonial range, right? Colonial range is something that's determined by our diplomatic technology. Uh, right here, right below tr trade range is colonial range. Now, Diplotech 7 will get a lot more. Alternatively, we'll get a lot more colonial range if we wait for overseas exploration. It'll give us 50% more. Right now, it's 160, right? So that gets us up to 240. Does 240 get us where, do we, where we need to be? 254. 254. It's close. 230. That's a 230 right there. That's a 230 right here. 249. So we could actually, if we had one more diplomatic idea group, we could, we could colonize right there. Um, I'm kind of wondering why we can't colonize here, though. Alternatively, we could start in Africa, do this province, and then use that as a bouncing off point. And that should get us to Brazil, because that, that'll be a few sea tiles downward. In fact, what does it actually say? Why does it say the effective distance is a 150? Oh, uh, from Matera, 150? I don't know. The, the game is weird. It's like, that's a 150, but this is a two, a 236. I, I don't know. The game is goofy sometimes. The game is goofy sometimes. I think we colonize this province. Now, there's a lot of natives here, and they're very aggressive and very ferocious. Literally, aggressive and ferocity, right? So let's send... And it says that it's Sunni over here. So let's send the colonists there, but we do need to actually get some troops there 
preemptively, right? We need to actually sort of sort of allocate some of our troops over to that province, which actually means paying for the army. Lots of choices here, guys. Lots, lots of choices we're running into here. But we're going to want about 4,000 dudes. I don't know. That's such a... That's such a... I don't think we're... To, this is a very problematic province to try to colonize because the natives are so aggressive. I think we're either going to try to send a conquistador to the Cape Verde and try to see if we can reach Cape Verde. Or we're going to wait until we get the additional colonial range. There it is. So I think it... There we go. We can go to Cape Verde. There's no natives on Cape Verde. There's no aggressive... No ferocity. That's because there is no one living on Cape Verde. Um, let's go. So we are colonizing Cape Verde. It looked like we just had to actually, looks like, hey, we learned something new today, guys. You just basically uh, sort of go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you'll eventually sort of learn about these, these uh, coastal areas and stuff, which is kind of nice. So we are officially colonizing our first province. Let's go. Let's go. And uh, this will go very slowly, <laughs> very slowly. 20 per year with a 15% chance to get a little bit of a bonus here. But this is working. Our co colonist is, is working in this area and this is working. Let's stop paying for our army because it's expensive. Colonizing is incredibly expensive as well. That is something worth noting. Colonizing is costing us two ducats to maintain this colonist. That colonist is costing us two ducats a month. That's the price of like two forts. That's the price of uh, one third of our army at full strength, basically, right? We're paying about six ducats for our army. That's a third of our army, basically, being paid for there. That's that's kind of intense. That's kind of intense. But we are colonizing, guys. So for the next three years, and we are going to be having a lot of truces, are going to be ending here in a few years. Oh, it looks like Tlemcen is actually at war with Tunis. What's going on here? Is is Castile called into this? going on who declared on who oh tunis is smart tunis is smart tunis declared on these guys rather than declaring on telemson so castile never got called in castile never got called into that actually what could be kind of interesting is if we actually use castile to help us against marrakesh why would they not as a oh they have a truce right but but see they have a truce so if we get rid of this truce, we could actually call Castile in against Marrakesh. But here's the thing. Marrakesh isn't just Marrakesh. Marrakesh is also Tlemcen. We could force Castile to break their own alliance with Tlemcen by going to war with Tlemcen, even though they're they're kind of too dumb to realize what, what they're doing, right? The AI doesn't really think that many sort of like, like, uh, doesn't displace themselves mentally that much, which is kind of funny. Bermuda right there. Hey, we found it. And let's bring them back. But I think, guys, we have started the colonialism. And basically, that's all it is. It's just it's sending your colonists to provinces where you want to go. This gives us more colonial range. We noticed that we had a colonial range issue, right? Based on having a low diplomatic technology. But because we have Madeira, because we have the Azores, we have inherently more range than other nations. Castile has the Canary Islands, so that gives them a little bit of a bump. But, like, England has a very hard time getting down here because of that range. France has a hard time getting down here. They don't have these these sort of naval bases out here in the Atlantic to give them that bouncing point. So we're going to be the first, we are the first ones to be colonizing and we will be the first one to step foot on the new world, which is super cool. So we have discovered the new world guys. That is super exciting. Thanks everybody for watching this episode. Uh, it's been a couple episodes of peace, right? But there will be an episode of war soon as we are approaching 1471, which will be the year when the crusades resume. So thanks everybody for, uh, for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.